Yes. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And today we would like to talk about the euro. Um, as our discussion, our talk will be divided into three parts. Uh, easy uh, introduction, analysis, and conclusion. So, as there is uh, currently uh, the eurozone suffer the crisis. Uh, an important question arises, is euro area an optimal currency zone? We will see. Uh, we're going to analyze the eurozone by uh, criteria uh, which were developed by Robert Mundell. And these criteria are the following. There are three economic criteria, labor mobility, product diversification and openness, and three political criteria. Fiscal transfers, homogeneous preferences, and solidarity versus nationalism. I will start from uh, labor mobility. Uh, this criteria is uh, supposed to be one of the most important criteria. There should be a high rate of labor mobility among the parts of a uh, currency zone. Uh, if, the, if the labor mobility is high, it means that um, it will balance out uh, the unemployment rates in different countries of the zone. Um, however, the Eurozone has failed to achieve labor, high labor mobility. As you can see on the chart, uh, these are the current unemployment rates in different countries. We see that in Greece there are currently there is 25.6% of unemployment, in Spain 22.5%, while in Germany it's 4.7. Uh, if the labor mobility was uh, high among these countries, uh, in all these countries we would see uh, the unemployment rate, an average unemployment rate of 11.1%, which is average on, uh, um, on the Eurozone. Um, so why this, uh, uh, why this happened? Because we all know that uh, citizens of the Eurozone can uh, easily move from one country to another. But there are some uh, other uh, ma major obstacles, uh, like, mm, like language dissimilarities, like cultural dissimilarities, differences in education system, and lack of uh, cr cross-border personal ties. Uh, all these things uh, prevent people from moving from uh, one country to another and because of this only 3% of European citizens now live in other European countries. Let's continue the economic criteria. Second is um, product diversification. According to the Peter Cannon, OSHA countries should be well diversified and have similar Similar um, production and trade patterns. Uh, following the chart, show that EU countries have similar export patterns and diversified number of goods. Actually, this uh, the standard is not specified, but both index is over the half. So I think Euro countries uh, have greater similarity and great, greater diversification. And third is openness. Uh, when we check about the openness of one country, we usually use the total export and import because the participation in international trade can reflect the openness of one country. Uh, using data from the World Bank, we calculated the ratio of total export and import to GDP in 2014. As you can see here, most of the Euro countries um, are very open, um, almost reaching to average 100. Uh, when compared to the US, it's almost uh, three times higher. And especially smaller countries like Luxembourg and Malta are very open, reaching to 371 and 183 each. Okay, next. Um, this chart showed the show the uh, intra EU27 trade between 1999 and <coughs> 2011. Despite a sudden drop in 2009, intra EU intra EU27 trade increased 
a list of buying nearly 5% cheese after 5% cheese after um, unifying the currency. Uh, as a result, uh, Eurozone is, um, is also satisfied with the third criteria, the openness. When it comes to transfer criteria countries, the concept assists with each other in case of the adverse job built on OCA. But until now, Europe has no an evident arrangement in preparation for the case. Uh, this, this chart shows that they spend only 0.3% of total expenditure of European countries, 2014. Uh, homogeneity preference. Homogeneity preference is essential for managing crises efficiently. A consensus on the way to deal with asymmetric shocks is necessary for monetary policies of the entire currency union. Uh, the EMU has been more than 10 years, but they seem far from a common idea for Europe. For example, the EMU in 2013, uh, the German government encouraged the integration to make the EMU uh, a real physical union but the other countries disagree with their position. Consequently, the decision-making process is still not unified and restrict the European ability to act. Uh, therefore, Europe has not satisfied this criterion. to solidarity and majority. Actually, uh, it is difficult to answer because every country has different opinions and views and takes a stand depending on the situation and relationship with others. Um, as you can see, uh, this graph shows that uh, there are distinct differences for decision making between the EU and national level. And to sum up, the EU is not an optimal currency area. Um, even though every criteria uh, are is fulfilled, uh, it could be considered as an optimal currency area. However, in case of the EU, uh, two among two among the among five criteria uh, are satisfied, and the others are not. And doubt to answer. So. We made so we made a conclusion that Euro is not an optimal currency area. Thank you for the receipt and this is the end of our presentation. Okay, so then uh, do you have any opinion of the experts about this whether Euro Euro is an optimal currency area or not? some opinions like uh, I we read an article of uh, uh, Kenneth Rogoff on yes. uh, Project Syndicate and he actually said that uh, Euro he, in 2012 he predicted that Euro will not help alone because it doesn't fulfill uh, many criteria uh, many models criteria okay so then the next question then if you think the euro is not an optimal currency area, what do you think will happen in the future? Actually, many countries are trying to go out of the EU. Mm -hmm. uh, Brexit or Brexit. You mean Britain? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. I saw an article in the mm -hmm. newspaper. Mm -hmm. so. well, what about the euro area? Britain is in the EU, but not in the euro area. Euro area, the 17 countries. 
what do you think will happen in future to the euro area? Many countries, I think that many countries want to leave the euro, but I don't think it's likely to happen because um, the policy of Europe is dictated by big, big countries like Germany, like France, and for them it's not beneficial to let all the countries go. Okay. So then, thank you. Then uh, let's have the group two. our presentation, our group number two, and today we brought the topic about the uh, yeah, we have a wrong group number. Yeah. So we brought the topic about the U.S. current account deficit. And then first, uh, let me tell you about our content. First, I will give a general idea of uh, what we bring the, about the topic, and then uh, Temin will uh, Temin will discuss about the. What uh, U.S. current account is uh, sustainable or non-sustainable? Then finally, you know we wrap up our presentation with uh, conclusion and Q&A time. So if you have any questions, please wait until the end of our presentation. Uh, so uh, the U.S. current account deficit has uh, gradually uh, become the focus of the world economy. So many scholars have uh, studied the issue of trade imbalance from the different perspective. So we focus on the side of the uh, US current account is not sustainable, so they will discuss about this matter. Yeah, then. Hello, my name is Temin Che, and now I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about uh, sustainability to US current account. So first one is investment in US assets. A lot, a lot of, a lot of investors, um, they uh, keep keep investing to uh, U.S. asset because U.S. economy has some strengths uh, with um, investment, and they also uh, stable and safe haven uh, more than other countries like uh, developed country. And second one is imbalance between uh, export and import. Um, um, U.S. Uh, had has some, have some uh, weakness in import, so they have a lot of debt, but they they didn't uh, pay back. So uh, they so they can't solve that problem, so it's the um, reason why U.S. current account is it. So a uh, third one is role of uh, Asian central banks. Um, nowadays, uh, Asian uh, countries are uh, result from globalization, so Asian countries has some um, def dependency on exports, so they they trying to make dollar uh, depreciation, and so they investment uh, U.S. asset and currency. So this, as you can see, this graph show that uh, U.S. trade balance by sectors. So uh, please look at the uh, services part sectors. Uh, services sector uh, sector has uh, really low. Uh, role than um, capital goods and industrial supplies and materials. So it it means that U.S. Uh, country has some problem at the export and trade, some kind of that. So they need to solving that problem. 
So, um, a lot of Asian countries, uh, they are afraid about risk of U.S. currency deficit, account deficit, because um, they, uh, their currency value extremely depreciate now, so uh, they didn't um, uh, believe the U.S. Cur uh, US cur currency. So, so um, China and Japan and Korean um, ministers say that uh, we didn't believe the U.S. currency. So Barack Obama, after that, uh, say like this, there is no safer investment in the world than in the USA. So, uh, next part will be presented by Juan. Next slide is the uh, US currency account is not, most, uh, not sustainable. About the question that uh, U.S. current account deficit is uh, is the is the U.S. current account deficit is sustainable? The Sebastian at the work and we uh, research on such case said uh, no, it's not sustainable and not just months. If history is any guide, it's likely to be painful and costly, uh, causing the U.S. economy output measured as GDP to plummet. It means in, in order to uh, in order to sustain the uh, U.S. current account deficit, they have they have to rather uh, they have to spend a lot of the, their money. Uh, there are the three reasons of U.S. current account deficit is unsustainable. The first is loss of market confidence. If there is a uh, loss market confidence. Uh, that can cause the economic recession uh, because of the afraid of risk. Second is the GDP made by foreigners. Uh, by increasing the foreign foreigner in the US, uh, the inflow is also getting uh, getting increasing. So that can cause the US current accounts and deficit getting worse. Third is the pressure of Asian country. Asian country, Asian Central Bank try to keep the U.S. capital for their economic strategy, so they can uh, cost the current account deficit getting worse. Mm, this, inter this slide is the international investment positions of the United States. The gap between the U.S. owned asset overall line and foreign owned asset in the United States uh, can cause the current account deficit getting worse too. So they are trying to decline the uh, deficit ratio compared uh, with GDP before the current account deficit can be much worse. Then let's move on to the next slide to look at the... <coughs> okay, I will make a conclusion about our presentation today. And uh, I think to, invest, uh, to investigate uh, is, a, is a good way to investigate the sources, the investments, and the structure pro, uh, structure structure in current accounts is uh, uh, and we can determine the USCA deficit is sustainable or unsustainable. I think if the CA deficit is used in uh, in domestic invest investment and it's, it is sustainable because it can enhance the ability of, uh, re of repaying the debt and if the CA deficit is used in trade, in trade sector and it's also the is also sustainable because it can stimulate the exports in the future, and it uh, and it can also enhance the ability ability of uh, repaying the debt. 
and if the USC deficit, deficit is because of the long-term foreign investment and it's also sustainable because it can uh, be, uh, because long-term uh, private investment is more stable and it causes less uh, crisis in one country's economy. But corresponding to these three standards, I think USCA deficit is unsustainable <coughs> uh, because first, uh, the growth of US, uh, the growth of uh, households and governments, uh, of and government spending is uh, increased very sharply, and the domestic investment was uh, uh, was uh, was deduced. And second, uh, the structure of of domestic investment has changed a lot because of the low saving rates and because of the low saving rates and the competition from uh, from uh, foreign uh, from foreign uh, foreign uh, foreign industries uh, uh, and they and now the US domestic investment uh, is turning to some non cheap parts such as house and fa and, fa and finance and thirdly uh, more and more foreign investors like to buy, like uh, like to purchase um U.S. treasury uh, treasury bond rather than U.S. stock. So it causes uh, U.S. CA deficit more and more unsustainable. And because U.S. is the strongest country uh, in the world, and so U.S. have uh, have a significant significant impact uh, on the world. Uh, so with the USC deficit uh, become more and more serious, I think the US dollar may suffer a uh, depreciation, and the US uh, the the <coughs> the state of US uh, dollar will will be weakened, and then it will cause uncertainty not only to the US and all of the world. Okay, that is our presentation. Thank you. Okay, so then what, what can be done? What should be done to solve the problem? You say it's unsustainable, so what should be so, done? Uh, so uh, US, uh, US have some problem of uh, export and import. So import is more than export. So they try to uh, strengthen about export. So they need to uh, Earn money and pay back their debt. Okay. And then, uh, do you have uh, any data about the investment? <coughs> investment? Mm, at the start of your presentation, you gave some reason why the. the yeah, the next slide. So here the investment in U.S. assets. Yes. Uh, we uh, just uh, search about the not figure, just letters, mm. paragraph. So we uh, we if yeah. So we didn't include it here. Uh, okay. Do you have in the other report yeah. some figures about that? All right, so thank you. Okay, so then let's take a break again for five minutes. <laughs>